grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Glory, glory, glory to Father God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Minister Davis. I'm going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that I'm alive for such a time as this. Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice, whether it is this week or a year from now, should our Lord choose to tarry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for cultivated hearts and ears. I thank you for people who are ready to hear the word of God. Father, those who choose to edify themselves with the word. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, I thank you that it is you who have called me. You who have predestined me to be a minister and a dispenser of the gospel that is grace. Father, I thank you that you have qualified me. You have made me fit. Father, I look to your wisdom and your words and your glory and your power. I can do nothing without you, Father. And by faith, I know I can do all things in you. I trust in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness that would prevent those from hearing this word who would hear you, Father, this day. I rebuke them, Father, from the root in the name of Jesus. And I do this by the authority given to me in that name and by the power of the blood. I choose to walk therein and subdue the forces that are contrary to you. Father, I thank you for your love and your majesty and your grace and your truth. Father, I thank you that your word that is life, your word that is water, your word that is a wellspring that flows from me. I look to you in all things. Father, I thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every person who hears this word today will study it and will share it with another. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I submit myself under the mighty hand of God, Father, this day. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray and I thank you. Amen. I'm going to begin this message today first by reading the scripture. And then I'm going to go into this pretty quickly. Um, uh, there will also be a dream that I will post because this they seem to run basically synonymous. This dream was put back on my heart as well as this message. Um, and it is, it is for this time, no doubt. I'm going to first read John, verse 10. I mean, John chapter 10, 27 through 28. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We would never be plucked out of the hand of God. Those who believe in him will never be taken from him. We know his voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. Which brings me to the message. This message is my sheep. Know my voice and the voice of the stranger. They will not follow. The word of God says the, we hear his voice. And when I had meditated on this, I got up and it was early AM that the Lord said that to me, um, that we are to use this word interchangeably, the, the, this word voice interchangeably with word. And so I'm going to read it in that form. My sheep know my word and the word of a stranger. They will not follow. <laughs> I want you to hear that again. My sheep know my word and the word of a stranger. They will not follow. This has always been important, but nowadays it has never been more important than what's going on in the world today. What I'm going to do here really quickly, I'm going to be bouncing around. I want to make sure that I don't forget any scripture here um, because it will be relevant um, uh, to various things he's giving me. I'm going to read Amos right quick. Amos 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst, or nor thirst for water, but for hearing of the words of the Lord. The Lord put this on my heart because nowadays there are so many people who are being wooed, some of the most packed churches. And I know that many think because these churches are packed, it got to be the glory of God in that house. But that is just not so. There would be a great falling away. The word of God also tells us that narrow is the gate, and there'll be few who find it. There are going to be so many led to the slaughter. And it's a sad thing, but you, if you don't know your Bible, you need to study that the, uh, many members in the body of Christ, in the church, will be led astray. 
They're going to be led astray by vain philosophy and, and wisdom of words. They go where it sounds good. Everything's about love. We have to love one another. Let's just put our differences aside and agree that uh, all these different names mean the same thing. And all these different paths is leading to the same God. And it's just not the truth. The Bible also tells us in the last days that many are going to go forth finding teachers. They have an itchy ears. They're going to find teachers that say what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. And the end thereof is death. I want y'all to get this. I'm going to read, um, let me see, um, just to equate to you that the voice of the Lord is the word. In Genesis verse 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 9. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. We already know that the word of God says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. We know who the word is. The word wrapped in the flesh was Jesus. Who They heard the voice of the Lord walking. They heard the Lord walking. He is the word. We know that. And any of you have heard many messages I've taught before, we're the word in the flesh all over again. And when people say, how? Yeah, how? Jesus came because he is the word in the flesh. He left when he ascended back, having all power in his hand. He came again as the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. We, he's the, we are the word all over again. That's why he said the works that I do, you will do greater. Because I go unto the Father. He came forth in a whole nother ministry in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go down and I'm going to read um, the philosophy. Don't be spoiled by the philosophy. This is the thing um, that the Lord led me to according to my sheep know my word and the word of another they will not follow. Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. The rudiments of the world, it says beware. And this word beware means to be on guard. And, you know, I'm going to get to that scripture, to guard your heart. To be on guard. This is warfare against your heart because people are going to spoil you. That's to ruin you, destroy you, to spoil you. Because if you listen to the word of God when he said he spoiled all principalities, he disarmed them. To spoil you is to totally disarm you by philosophy. All this, we came from a monkey and the big bang, and it's all about love and, and peace and your spiritual self. You know, you hear all this, control your own destiny. Pay attention to this. You don't control your own destiny. We are not to carve our own paths. We are to commune with the Holy Spirit that he lead us to the perfect path that has already been predestined. It's predestined. How can you control your destiny if it's been predestined by God? I'll say that again. How can you control your own destiny when it's been predestined by God? So the only perfect path we have is the path that he's already carved, that we are to be led to by his word and by the sound of his voice. Not by our own. A lot of people are chasing money. I said this before. They're chasing money. They're chasing prosperity. When the Bible tells us goodness and mercy shall pursue us all the days of our life. We ought to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. I've said that before. The kingdom of God is his power and all the things therein. His righteousness is us. There's people who have been predestined to be brought into the kingdom that have not been found yet. And we are to seek them. That's why he tells us to go out and compel them to come. This philosophy. Let me, I, I'm, I, 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 I found this also in the New International Version because I want to say it in many ways so people can understand. And another way that Colossians 2 and 8 reads, See to it that no man takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the element of spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. You, basically, you believe in how, just how positive you think. Yeah, the Bible tells us to renew our mind, but what are you renewing your mind with? I'm going to get to that. That's the heart and end of the heart. What are you renewing your mind with? Are you sowing fruit of the Spirit? Because that's what, that, are you showing seed, sowing seed of the Spirit? That's what's going to show forth. If you're showing and you're feeding the flesh, that's what's going to show forth. You're going to reap the fruit of the flesh if that's what you're sowing. And anything that's done by this world's ways and method is seeds of the flesh 
and it will not be successful. It may look good for a time. You'll be shocked. I see how many Christians are saying, control your own destiny. It's all about you controlling your destiny. And that is just not so. We are to be led into the destiny that was predestined. Because if you are his, you have a path that has been laid out for you. And the spirit will lead you to the time and to the chance and the happenings of the Lord. Because you are communing with his Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that he would say, you know, you will hear a voice behind you if you will hearken to him. This is the way. Walk therein. We are not to be self-willed. And if you study the word, it's always been that way. The children in the desert were supposed to obey, obey the sound of his voice. They chose and they asked for a law. He gave them one to show them that they needed a savior. Not because they were supposed to live by it the rest of their life. But that's another thing. Let me stay on point. We're going to break down the definition of philosophy. Any person, any personal belief about how to live or how to deal with the situation. This is a personal belief. This is man's knowledge trying to teach you other than God's knowledge. The rational investigation or questions about existence and knowledge of ethics. Huh, did this sound familiar? Questions about how things exist and consist. And the Bible tells us that all things were made by the Lord and by all things does, by him does all things consist. You have got to be led by the voice of God and the word of God. They're bringing you questions about this. The Bible already tells you how all things were made. The Bible already tells you how all things consist. And think nothing is held together without the Lord. I don't care how smooth uh, the talk is. Because a lot of people are fooled by eloquent words. Those are timely words and smooth words. They're food. And that's not a sign of godliness. The third definition it gives. A belief or system of beliefs. Accepted as authoritative by some group. Uh, or school. No, that's not even a school of philosophy. They love for you to take a school of philosophy because you're going to come out stupid. <laughs> you're going to come out stupid. A whole lot of words that are dead because you're trying to reason with the word of God because then everything has to be proved by science, which means if they can't prove how it works or how it happened, it can't be real. And we know we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith come by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God, not hearing a philosophy. All these inspirational speakers, smiling Jack. We ain't going to call no names. We know some of these pastors that's all smiles or some that's very eloquent with their words. I mean, the command of their English language is phenomenal, but it's dead because it is no life without the word of God. The rudiments. I looked up the definition of rudiment, just a statement or a fundamental fact or principles. Basically, everything is done in a way that you have to take this step, this step, this step, you know, five steps to a better life, you know, different things. You know, if the word of God are not in those things and you're not being led by the voice of the Lord, you need to fall on your knees and seek your father because that is how it's always supposed to be for us. We are to be led by the word of God, not by smooth mouths. The Lord is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the bishop of our souls. And it is so many churches now that it is all about happy, inspirational speech, speech and they're a pact. I saw one minister, I'm a flat I say, he was in Joel Osteen's church. And he got put out because he stated what was in the word. You know, what I did notice that he was polite enough to let them, he was polite enough to wait until they finished their prayer. And I listened to that prayer. It was nothing about the Lord, nowhere in that prayer. It was all about self-willedness and, and, and time and peace and love and, and a better life through your inner mind and meditation. And what that have to do with the Lord? Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to give you a quick testimony here. And I'm, I'm not going to make it long because I want to stay on point. It's because the Lord led me to this church. I'm not even going to say the name of that church at this point because I'm, I'm, I'm really not led to say it right now. But this church, I can describe almost like a cult. This is only after I got in. When I got back to Oklahoma City, I was looking for a church and I was visiting a different church and I met this person in a flea market and he immediately came after me. And of course, I came back at him with a word because I told him the word tells me to try every spirit to see whether it's from God. I went to this church because he invited me. That's okay because I was led to do it. When I walked into this church, the first thing he did was tell me to put a scarf on my head. <laughs> and I said, uh, no. I said, I'm just here to observe. No, thank you. And I sent him away with a scarf. But I promise you, the Holy Spirit told me to call him back, that I was in their house. 
and I had to submit to their way of doing things. That's how serious the Lord is about authority. Even though this was a church that was in error, authority is very serious. And I knew at the, I didn't know till after the fact that I was on assignment, which is why I had to see what I had to see. And this was a place that's perverse teaching. <laughs> so I called the man back over there and I apologized and I asked him to would he give me a scar. And I listened. And as I went day to day, and I think I went to this church probably for about five to six weeks. Might have been a little longer. And I watched a man come in with one wife. And then I was sitting with another woman. I said, hey, that ain't the woman he was, came in here with last Sunday. <laughs> or last Friday because they went on Fridays. And then, you know, as I started to pay attention, I had never saw a church divide the word the way they did. Oh, they could go straight to it. I mean, had the men, the men and the way they submitted to authority and the way they ran that church and the way they submitted to their bishop and it wasn't all this contention. And it, it, it was just, I had never seen anything like it. I had never seen study of the word like that and command of the word like that. But at the same time, the Lord was, the Holy Spirit was letting me know error, error, error. Because they would take the word of God and they would start twisting it. But anyone who didn't have the Holy Spirit, I promise you, they would have taken you in. That's how good they were. And once my assignment was done, it was right in the middle of service. I heard the Holy Spirit say, get up and go. I got right up in the middle of service and I left. And he brought me to understand that this is how hard evil works to deceive you. It works hard to deceive you and to get you to focus on philosophy rather than the word of God. And when you get to focusing on philosophy and smooth words, because people can find some very crafty way to say things. You'd be like, boy, I never thought of it like that. And it has nothing to do with the word of God. The Bible tells us to guard our heart. I'm going to go down. The Bible tells us, even as um, uh, the word of God, for us not to handle the word of God deceitfully. This is in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 3. We are not to handle the word of God deceitfully, which is a lot what a lot of people are doing. They are taking it and putting their own twist, and most of them are not speaking the, the word of God at all. How do we avoid this happening? First, we need to harden not our hearts. A heart and a heart is a heart that is closed toward the word of God. And where you spend your time is going to determine this. The simplest way I can put it is your heart will become hardened to what you don't give attention to. A lot of people don't even spend time with the word of God. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved. Your heart will be softened to what you give your attention to. So if you're giving your attention to these philosophy teachers, guess what you're going to be sensitive to? That's what's going to be rooted. Because roots come forth out of what you give your attention to. You are rooted in the word. You know, you use the scripture of the stony ground because he had not deep roots in the word that by and by he was offended and he became unfruitful because he had not deep of earth. That's in the word of God. I'm going to say again, your heart becomes hardened to what you don't give attention to, which means if you don't study, he said, not just read, study the word of God, study to show yourself approved because that's what you become hardened to. And what you give your attention to is what you get a heart of flesh for, so to speak. And the heart is equivalent to the mind, the inner man. You don't want a heart of stone. So therefore you have to first make sure you don't become hardened to the word of God through deceitfulness. You become hardened to the word of God through lack of attention to the word of God. Lack of study will give you a hardened heart. Refusing to believe gives you a hardened heart. Simply when someone says something just because you don't know it don't mean it's not truth. You have to study. Most people be like, that's not true because they're not studying. You're supposed to know. That's why the Holy Spirit was able to instruct me the whole time I sat there. Error, error, red alert, left and right. But my assignment was not yet done. And I was on assignment, which was why I was in that wicked place because it's wicked. But I was on assignment. And only when he told me, you're done, get up. And he needed me to understand this is just how hard wickedness works to deceive. And that experience changed the way I studied. From that point, I never studied the same. I studied more intently than I ever had in my life. It is no doubt that that is what changed my study. I learned a lot of guys that they used to go study in because it was the excellent tools. But they used them to know the word good and then trick people. So after you guard yourself against a heart and heart, give attention to the word. Find you a Bible-based church that teaches the truth no matter whether feelings are hurt. Because if you can't be corrected, you can't grow. A lot of people can't stand correction. They will hate you because you correct them. But a wise person will love you because you correct them. You need to love correction. I'm going to go to Proverbs 4 and 23. Guard your heart. Keep... 
in, in verse 23 reads, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. That means out of it, uh, determines the course of your life. Your life is determined by what's in your heart. I can promise you what's in your heart is a, it's an express of what's, what, what's happening in your life from a day to day basis. What is in your heart? The decisions you make are going to determine the path of your life as far as whether you go up and down these different potholes. Some of these potholes you were never meant to go through. But you go through them because you are not seeking the will of God and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Next, I'm going to read Hebrews 4, verse 12. How do we discern? How are we able to discern smooth mouths and philosophies? Hebrews, verse 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This is how you discern. When the word of God is in you, the first line of BS that comes out toward you is going to be red alert. That doesn't matter how much you like the person. It's a lot of people who are liked. That's how they get people. They're charismatic. They're crafty. That's why people speak about character versus charm. They're very charming, like a snake. Everything is love and peace. and You cannot, it, the Bible says, behold the goodness and severity of the Lord. There are consequences for choosing to reject the Savior. He loves everyone. He wants everyone saved. You got to know that with everything in you. But he does not force. People want to go and live in this world because it's what's popular. So many people are driven and intoxicated off people. The Bible tells you not to be intoxicated with people because they are subject to change. And I know many of us have testimony of that. They turn on you in a blink. And when you don't have, they're not around. You trust God. I've said that before. I trust the God in me. I trust the God in my husband. That's that. This flesh, there's nothing good in it. We're going to go down to 1 Peter. The enemy is seeking who he may devour. Who is he seeking to devour? 1 Peter 5 verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's seeking those who are lost. He's seeking those who don't know the word. He's seeking those who don't believe the word and those who doubt the word. If you even have doubt, you, that's because you haven't studied. There's Christians who doubt what's in the word. They pick and choose one part to believe, but they won't believe the other. Why? Because it doesn't fit the way they want to live at that time. You can't pick and choose. All the words of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for doctrine. You know what the word says. You can't pick and choose what to live by. And there is word for everything in this world. We both, we, those of us who studied the Bible know this. There's nothing going on in this world that's worth you, your eternal soul. Don't fool yourself that you can just get saved and then sit blindly and do nothing. Because if you belong to Christ, it's, you're going to know it. He said you will know them by their fruit. And if you just got saved and you sitting still, you don't bless nobody, you don't help nobody, you're not even seeking the path of God for your life, you just got saved and you go to church long enough for you just to feel like you've done something, you go home and you still live it just like the world, I question your salvation. And you should too. You cannot be in him and be the same. It's impossible. He's not a liar. So you have to question yourself. You have got to re-examine your spiritual walk and your walk that should be holy. Don't expect to be perfect. This is going to be a day-to-day -day process. But it all starts with the word of God. My sheep know my word, my voice, and the word, my voice, of another, they will not follow. And you can't know that without studying the word of God. And I'm just going to read quickly here. Study to show yourself approved. First, uh, Second Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have to know the word not only so that you can rightly divide it, you need to know it so that you can know when someone else is tricking Quit being fooled by philosophy. It sounds real good. They got all these theology, theology terms. <laughs> and then they can connect the dots because, as I've said before, in the Greek and Hebrew, when you get to studying, various words can mean various different things. So you have to study. 
And they're good at tricking people. You'll get people using the fact that women ain't supposed to teach that I suffer not a Paul. I suffer not a woman to teach or be an authority over the man because the man was first. Do you know what that word mean? I suffer not a wife, not woman, a wife to teach, which means put authority over her husband. That's what that scripture bit. You got to study. You've got to study. And many people have shut women up from teaching by using that because then women don't know the word of God. Study. Study. I'm going to go down. Um, on various ways you need to learn to hear the Lord. You definitely need to study the word of God. There's no way around it. You need to have the word so much in you that the first time somebody starts to go left, that, I mean, listen to your Holy Spirit. But, he can't bring things to your remembrance that you ain't put in there. I like to tell, you know, according to the word, he tells us that the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance, what you've seen and what you've heard. You're not even studying the word. You're not even hearing the word. Word. So what is he supposed to bring to your remembrance? Get to know the Lord. Get to know his voice. His voice is not only the audible voice you hear in your head or in your heart. It is the written word. His rhema word the audible word, his right now word, and his logos word. You need to know it. You need to know when someone is not ministering the word of God to you. And if you don't study, you can't know that. Study to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved. Because I'm telling you, I'm going to record after this. I had a dream, and there was a pastor who was preaching from a Bible that had no words in it. And he was robotically repeating what he needed the people to repeat back to him. And I know that there was a great message in that dream. And I'm going to be recording this uh, immediately after I finish this message. So I pray that you listened. I pray that you get something from this. I thank you for tuning in and understand that he said clearly in his word that my sheep know my voice, which is his word too. And the word and voice of another, they will not follow. So you need to be asking yourself, if you're his sheep, you should know his word. If you are his sheep, you should know his voice. There is no in-between. There is no gray area. There is no other way unto God but through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no way to get faith but by the word. I thank you again for listening. This is Minister Davis of Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. Stay tuned for the messages that are to follow. God bless. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you. We preach. We preach. We're anointed. Anointed. We preach. We preach. We're appointed. Appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard, our Lord. So we preach, so go. Hey, listen up, those waiting is to hear. The time has come for the end is near. There's many people who still don't know. Our great commission is that we must go. He qualified us, he made us teach us. How can they hear without his preachers? We have a mind, and he gave us his wisdom. We are his body, and now is his kingdom. We preach. We preach. We're anointed. anointed. We preach. We preach. We're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard, our Lord and Savior gave you. Go. No man knows the day or need of the time, but he gave us warnings and heavenly signs. Open up your mind and surrender your heart. heart. Just trust in Jesus and press to the mark. So gird up family and prepare for this race. race. The world must know that they've been saved by grace. Here is wisdom that your spirit discern. 
All things not reborn in Christ will surely burn. We preach. We preach. We're anointed. Anointed. We preach. We preach. We're appointed. Appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard. Our Lord and Savior gave His word. We preach. So go. We move in word and we move. This is the time, his perfected hour. So cast down all fear, cast down your frustration. No procrastination, send to the world our destination. We preach, we preach. we're anointed. anointed. We preach, we preach. we're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard, our Lord and Savior gave his word. 